Page 40. Solve a radical equations. Solve each equation. Remember to check for extraneous solutions. You only have to check for extraneous solutions when there's a variable on the outside of the radical. Let's look at number 1. We have 2 equals the square root of x minus 3. To get rid of the square root, exponentiate each side by 2. 4 equals x minus 3. Add 3 to each side. x equals 7. So make sure you show your steps and not just specify the answer. Pause the video and try number 2. Let's look at number 3. The square root of 5 minus r equals the square root of r minus 1. Exponentiate each side by 2 to get rid of those roots. And then we have 5 minus r equals r minus 1. Add r to each side. We have 5 equals 2r minus 1. Add 1 to each side. We have 6 equals 2r. Divide by 2 on each side, and then we have r equals 3. Try number 4. Let's move on to number 5. The square root of 12 minus r equals r. Exponentiate each side by 2. And you get 12 minus r equals r squared. Move everything to one side of the equation. So we have 0 equals r squared plus 1r minus 12. We want to factor this. a times c is negative 12 and b is 1. Looks like 4 and negative 3 would work here. Divide by a. And then you have r plus 4 times r minus 3 equals 0. So our possible solutions are r equals negative 4 or r equals 3. We want to check for extraneous here because there is a variable on the outside. So let's plug in negative 4 first. So the square root of 12 minus negative 4 equal to negative 4. The square root of 16 is not equal to negative 4. If it was a negative, that would be imaginary. That is extraneous. And then let's try 3. The square root of 12 minus 3, is that equal to 3? The square root of 9 is equal to 3, so this one's real. So we'll go ahead and write that down. So we have real is r equals 3, and then extraneous is r equals negative 4. All right, try number 6. And let's look at number 7. Negative 5 times the square root of p over 6 equals negative 30. Divide each side by negative 5. So they have the square root of p divided by 6 equals 6. Exponentiate each side by 2. And they have p over 6 equals 36. Multiply each side by 6. And then you get p equals 216. You don't have to check for extraneous on this one since there's no variables on the outside of the root. Try the next one. And then let's look at number 9. The square root of 27 minus n 
equals the square root of n over 8. Exponentiate each side by 2. So then you have 27 minus n equals n over 8. Uh, let's multiply each side by 8. So we have negative 8n plus 216 equals n. Add 8n to each side. So then we have 216 equals 9n. Divide each side by 9. And then we have n equals 24. Try number 10. Okay, let's look at number 11. m equals the square root of 24 plus 2m. So we will exponentiate each side by 2. So we have m squared equals 24 plus 2m. Move everything to one side of the equation. So they have m squared minus 2m minus 24 equals 0. Factor this. a times c is negative 24. b is negative 2. The two numbers that look like they'll work here is 6 and 4. The 6 will be negative, 4 is positive. Divide by a. m minus 6 times m plus 4 equals 0. So you have two possible numbers to check. m equals 6 and negative 4. Let's check those. So is 6 equal to the square root of 24 plus 2 times 6? Is 6 equal to the square root of 36? Yes, that's true. Okay, let's check negative 4. Is negative 4 equal to the square root of 24 plus 2 times negative 4? Is negative 4 equal to the square root of 16? No, because negative 4 does not equal 4. It's false. m equals negative 4 is extraneous. So, we'll go ahead and specify our answers. We have real, m equals 6, extraneous, m equals negative 4. Try the next one, number 12. 13, n equals 4 plus the square root of 4m minus 16. The first thing you want to do is isolate the square root. We could do that by subtracting 4 from each side. So we have n minus 4 equals the square root of 4n minus 16. To get rid of a square root, we'll square each side. Exponentiate by 2. Uh, n minus 4 squared, if you use box or foil, you get n squared minus 8n plus 16. And that's going to equal 4n minus 16. And then let's move everything to one side of the equation. So subtract 4n each side, and then add 16 on each side. So then we have n squared minus 12n plus 32 equals 0. We will factor this. a times c is 32. b is negative 12. The two numbers that multiply to 32 and add to negative 12 is negative 8 and negative 4. We'll divide those by a, which is 1. And so then we have n minus 8 times n minus 4 equals 0. So then we have the two solutions, n equals 4 or 8. So we'll plug those back in and see if they're true statements. Okay, let's plug in n equals 4. 
So is 4 equal to 4 plus the square root of 4 times 4 minus 16? 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. Is, and 4 is equal to 4 plus the square root of 0. That would just be 4 equals 4. So this one is true. n equals 4 is real. Okay, then let's try n equals 8. Is 8 equal to 4 plus the square root of 4 times 8 minus 16? Is 8 equal to 4 plus the square root of 16? Yes, 8 does equal 4 plus 4. So it's true. So that means that n equals 8 is real. So we have two real solutions. And there's no extraneous solutions in this case. All right, let's look at number 15. The square root of 3v minus 3 minus the square root of 4 minus v equals 3. The first thing we want to do is move one of these square roots to the other side. So then we have the square root of 3v minus 3 equals 3 plus the square root of 4 minus v. From here we're going to square each side, exponentiate both sides by 2. We use box of foil to multiply this one out. We get 3v minus 3 equals 9 plus 6 square root of 4 minus v plus 4 minus v. From here we want to move everything to one side of the equation except for the other square root right here. So we'll subtract 9, subtract 4, and add v to each side. So then we have four v minus sixteen equals six times the square root of four minus v. We could get rid of the six, divide each side by it. Um, each of these three numbers also factor out with the two, so we could divide everything by two here, and then we could get. 2v minus 8 all over 3 equals the square root of 4 minus v. To get rid of the square root, we could exponentiate each side by 2. So then when we multiply that out, we get 4v squared minus 32v plus 64 all over 9 equals 4 minus v. So from here we can multiply each side by 9 to get rid of the fraction. So then we have 4v squared minus 32v plus 64 equals 36 minus 9v. From here we want to move everything to one side of the equation except for 0. So we can subtract 36 from 64 and then add 9v to 32v. So we have 0 on this side, and then we, on the other side we have 4v squared minus 23v plus 28. So then we want to factor this. a times c is 4 times 28, that's 112, and our b is negative 23. We will find two numbers that multiply to give you 112, and they add to give you negative 23. The two numbers that work here is negative 16 
and negative 7. And then we divide those by a, which is 4 in this case. So then we have v minus 4 times v minus 7 over 4 equals 0. So then you have two possible solutions. We have v equals 4 or 7 fourths. So we're going to check both of those solutions to see if they're real or extraneous. Let's plug in v equals 4 first. So we have is the square root of 3 times 4 minus 3 minus the square root of 4 minus 4 equal to 3. 3 times 4 is 12, so we have 12 minus 3 minus the square root of 0. Is that equal to 3? 12 minus 3 is the square root. We have square root 9. And yes, that's equal to 3. So that means that v equals 4 is real. Okay, and then let's do v equals 7 fourths. So if the square root of 3 times 7 fourths minus 3 minus the square root of 4 minus 7 over 4 equals 3. So then we have the square root of 21 over 4 minus 12 over 4 minus the square root of 16 minus 7 over 4 equals 3. So then we get square root of 9 over square root 4 minus square root of 9 over square root 4 does that equal 3. The square root of 9 is 3 the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 3 halves minus 3 halves. That does not equal 3, that equals 0. So this was false. So v equals 7 fourths is extraneous. Okay, complete the rest of this page and then move on to the last page. So before you turn in your packet, take a few moments to finish your Unit 7 reflection. Summarize of what you've learned, what questions do you still have, how are you studying inside and outside class, what are some new things to, to do that you haven't already to become better in the class, where are your goals, also, don't forget to do your cherry quiz on Canvas for this unit.